Just, Mr. President, just don't go over and hug that lying weasel son of a bitch. Don't do it. Please don't do it. Oh, you're going to laugh? Oh, big joke. <laughs> hey, big uh, Good Lord. Here's Dave Bender. Hi, David. Hey, Mike. Yes, this is Tag's big moment. He yeah. just passed the Secret Service. Yeah, he did. Uh, David Bender, who is a, politi- a political director for uh, Progressive Voices, joins us now from California. Uh, I just looked, glanced up at the monitor here. That was Taggart, who, who went up to the president and did what? He said, I'm sorry, I'm just a wimp ass. Uh, I was trying to be big man. God knows. And and I I believe you said you've never heard anyone, you know, talk so much and say so little uh, with respect to uh, Tag's father. Mm -hmm. Uh, I got to tell you, Mike, and and we're going to hear this uh, over the course of the next day, but Romney actually looked physically ill to me. He did. Yeah, he did. He he had a lot what appeared to be flop sweat. You know what I mean by flop sweat. I I sure do. And, And, you know, look, these campaigns are very difficult. But if if those of us with <laughs> unfortunately long memories can go back to what happened in 1960, the very first televised debate, the reason that that uh, Richard Nixon did so poorly, mm-hmm. aside from the fact he was Richard Nixon, was <laughs> that he refused makeup. He thought it was unmanly, right? And he was he had just uh, had a bout of the flu. He'd been campaigning all over the country, and so he went on camera, and he was sweating. Mm-hmm. And he and and the TV cameras picked it up, and he looked bad. Romney looked bad tonight. Well, do you suppose uh, maybe he looked bad because finally, finally, the president of the United States said that's not true on several things that he said, especially on the um, the op-ed that Romney wrote for the New York Times. Oh yeah. About, about Re- regarding what? regarding the bailout, Romney Romney is just a, a, a liar. I, I mean, I've never seen anyone who is so willing and able to sit there and lie flat out, even when uh, you know the president says you're lying, you're not telling the truth. Check the record. Uh, you know, let's everyone check the record. And, and Romney has done this in all three debates, Mike. What he's done is to show that he's uh, he believes his own lies. He. He says, I'm talking here. I'm not done. I, right. he, he continues to show disrespect to the president of the United States. It's shameful, but of course Romney has no shame. No. So he, it, he it goes on. And, and if I have one disappointment, and I'm for this president, I want him to be reelected. The Supreme Court matters, but I'm telling you, at some point, one would have wished he'd looked him in the eye and said, Governor, I am sick of what you're doing. I'm tired of listening to you do this over and over again. Finally, when you call a bully on being a bully, when you call a liar to his face, what it is, not in the third party, but in directly, one-on-one, that has an impact. I know all the poll testing says, don't be an angry black man. Well, enough of that already. I mean, well, I, you really, know, I, I, you're, you're you're right. The uh, the the angry black man thing is what a white America is uh, has built up this 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 character called the angry black man, and they're terrified of him. But the, the, here, here's the problem with with uh, 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 Obama or anybody uh, stepping out and calling this guy an absolute liar. Uh, I would have liked to have heard him say exactly what you said, David. But do you realize how the, the, the pundits would have ripped Obama to pieces, called him disrespectful, impolite? And, and you repeat that over and over and yeah, over. Well, I, I, I hear you. I right. hear you. And, and yet Romney is disrespectful and impolite. Well, he is. And somehow he is he's considered to be strong and assertive. There's, there's something wrong with that picture. And again... It is a, a it's the color race, it, right? It's the race thing. Uh, you know, Absolutely. we we know we know where we live, uh, David. We know yeah. what's going on. And anybody in this country, I mean, the whole tea bag movement was based on racism. The entire thing. Every no time, question you, about it, Mike. every time no you question. hear this, uh, uh, you know, we're going to take our country back. We're going to take it back from who? The Martians? No, that that Kenyan, that guy with the phony uh, birth certificate. I am so sick of this. Uh, on that basis alone. I wish Obama would just hand Romney his ass on a platter on November 6th on that basis alone. And I shouldn't do that because, you know, it's become a purely emotional thing with me. Now, I'm I, with you. 
I, I agree. I, I happen to think that uh, Obama's policies are less destructive than Romney's. Uh, but, I, you know, I've let emotion take over where uh, where I should be using my head a little bit more because. Well, well, let, let, let me say I wrote a piece for progressive voices called The Great White Dope. <laughs> and that's that's what I think I see when I look at Mitt Romney. You remember, we all, again, with long memories, we remember that when Joe Lewis was heavyweight champion of the world, my, my dad used to tell me about this, that they kept throwing these white guys up against him, right. just, and they kept losing. Mm -hmm. But the idea was, but we've got to find a white champion. It's wrong. There's a, there's a black guy there, and right. he's champion of the world. There's something wrong with that picture. Right. And it didn't matter. So the phrase, the great white hope, kept you know, coming up year after year after year. That's what Mitt Romney is. He is he is the great white hope, but he is in fact an empty suit. He is a dope. He knows nothing about oh, the subject he was talking about. That. Absolutely nothing. Uh, you know, his take on foreign policy uh, leaves me with, with the willies. I, I, I mean, if somebody like Romney... Uh, as bad as George W. Bush was, I don't think he was quite as out of touch with the reality uh, as Romney. Romney has no mind of his own. He's he's like somebody from the Wizard of Oz. He's yep. like is a scarecrow, the one that didn't have the brain. Uh, yeah. And and Romney is putty in the hands. What did I hear tonight of his twenty six foreign policy advisors? Nineteen of them come from the Bush Bush, Bush. Uh, Bush administration. Bush what the what yeah, the hell absolutely. is that? Uh, it, it's it's just it's just unbelievable. And and I'll tell you something else. You're you're right about the Great White Hope thing. Uh, when I was in in high school, um, we had a chance to. Uh, he was an old man then, but he came to our school. Jesse Owens came to our school, oh, and 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 told us the story of the 1936 Olympics and how the uh, uh you know the nazis the, uh, were were utterly convinced their aryan supremacy and Jesse Owens got in there and won what three or four gold medals and and just kicked the ass of the whole aryan nation all by himself so uh, the, the this thing about romney the, the you know real conservatives hate his ass but he's caucasian so you're right. And, he, and, he's and, a and they, great will forgive, white they will forgive anything. That's right. If if a, a white man can take back the White House, that's <laughs> it, it, it's it's unfortunately, sadly, and pathetically as simple as that. He did himself no favors tonight, though. He well, well, speak. no, not only that, but but David, do you remember when he said that Iran is backing Syria because it gives Iran a, a, a key? To, to the sea. Iran has a thousand mile coastline on the goddamn Indian Ocean. What is with this guy? Syria, you know, you know what Syria's coastline on the Mediterranean is? It's about the size of your backyard. I mean, what is this guy talking about? Mark, I have a very big backyard. Let's not start comparing backyards here. But, but, but you're right. He, he doesn't know what he's talking about. He memorized a lot of lines. And let's be clear about Mitt Romney. The, the one thing that is galling to me that we've gone through three debates now, and he's managed every time to say, I've been a businessman for 25 yeah, years. Yeah, right. And he gets away with that when, in fact, he's not for a the last man. 20 years, for the last 20 years, Mike, this guy has spent 16 of them running for office. Four years he was governor. The rest of the time he's been running for something. He is a professional politician well, who no, for seven know, years is president of Romney, Inc. You know, in addition to that, and David, i got to take a break here. Just stay there. We'll come right back. In addition to that, you know, the, 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 Romney's never had to uh, meet a payroll. He's never had to do hiring and firing. He's never had to decide who's going to be the shop foreman. This guy was a predator. This was vulture capitalism. It has nothing to do with creating jobs. We'll be right back. Back to uh, Progressive Voices political director, David Bender. Um, you know, th th there's no price uh, for Romney to pay, David, for all the lies uh, in foreign policy. Because the average right winger only has one foreign policy, and that is Jesus is coming and he'll kick everybody's ass. Um, on a horse with a bayonet. On a horse with a bayonet, that's right. So, uh, and, and did you see, if you're, if you're watching the scroll, um, uh, I'm watching MSNBC, in the spin room, a lot of the Obama, uh, oh, I'm sorry, 
why the Romney operatives really have their underwear in a bunch because uh, the president zinged him with that. Uh, you know, it's not 1916. We don't have we don't use horses and bayonets. What a, what a bunch of candy asses. I swear to God. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, 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 and, and they're the ones who, you know, talk about uh, Romney's zingers and how they prep for it. I mean, look, it, 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 this was not a prep. This was something spontaneously the president understood is that when you talk about these things that you know nothing about, like the number of ships that the Navy has, right. you've got to put it in terms that people understand. Right. And, and Romney is to the Navy what he was to Detroit. He would have sent, you know, the American auto industry back to the horse and buggy days. So it, it is, it's horses and bayonets, horses and buggies. That's who Mitt Romney showed himself to be tonight. Now, the, 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 we're watching the same thing. Mike, and, and that MSNBC crawl seems to suggest that what all of the pundits are going to say is that Romney was playing a prevent defense, mm-hmm. just trying not to make a mistake <laughs> and sit on what it, they think is the lead. Now, you know, it, it, you know football, that, that is always a high-risky uh, strategy, a high-risk strategy, and in fact, he's not in a lead. This mm-hmm. is in, in the key states. This is tied, and it's been moving back to where the president in places like Ohio and Iowa and Wisconsin, where this election is going to get decided. And I do not think Romney helped himself there tonight. I, I don't either. And, and I think one of the strongest uh, comments that Obama could have made was the comment that he did made about uh, when he calls uh, Romney on the lies. Now, that's not going to affect the brain dead right wingers. They don't care because in, in their in their theology, whether it's political or religion, uh, lying is OK as long as the end result is, is what you're seeking. You know, the glory of capitalism or the glory of God or what have you. Lying is OK. You can always repent at the last minute. Anyway, but for the people who may have been genuinely undecided, uh, how, how how someone could be undecided at this point in this uh, this uh, political uh, uh, campaign, I don't know. But for someone who is undecided to see Romney not have a comeback when the president more or less said to him, that's not true. That is a lie. And I, I think that uh, people do not want to realize that they're backing a liar. They may back a liar, but they don't want somebody to tell them that they're backing a liar. So well, I, right. I, I, I think and that was true with Ronald Reagan. Yeah, that was true with Ronald Reagan. Absolutely, who, who same lied, thing. Who lied or misspoke or, or or didn't know constantly? Absolutely, but because he believed his own lines, the lines that he was fed, in the same way that Romney believes or is convincing. Mm-hmm. I, I think of him as a carnival barker, really. He, <laughs> he is convincing, <laughs> persuasive about the lies he's telling. But you're, you're absolutely right, Mike. People do not want to believe they are being misled. They want the right. elixir. They want the 12 million jobs. It's a bottle that he's selling. Okay? It's, it's it incredible. I mean, to stand there, Romney will be the first one to tell you that government doesn't produce jobs. And in the same breath, he'll say that he, what the hell is a president if not the government? <laughs> he is going to produce 12 million jobs. And the bobbleheads sit there and, and that doesn't jar them to the yeah. point where they say, wait a second, this guy is lying through his ass to me. I mean, yeah. how do you how do you do that? Well, Romney's advisors apparently they have said to him, just go out there and lie because the race thing will carry you through. Yeah, I, I, I think that's exactly what he's being told. And in many places, uh, particularly after the first debate, all Romney had to do was be credible in the way that John McCain never was. People looked at John McCain and said, this man has lost. He is not mentally sound. It, you do not want to give your grandfather who shouldn't have the remote control to the TV, <laughs> the nuclear code. That's what John McCain was, and that and, and following Bush and a disastrous economy, McCain was not the white guy who could win. Right. But Romney in this situation is the contrast, and it is it don't adjust the color on your set, folks. That's exactly <laughs> what you're looking at. That's, That's the contrast the Republicans wanted to put forward. Now to your point about who's left of the undecided, CBS did their snap poll. You may have just seen this crawl. I just did. 53% of undecideds tonight, uh, polled by CBS, said that Obama won. Only 23% thought Romney won. 
Well, I and that is having his ass handed to him. I I I I I hope that's the case. I, I'll tell you, David. All right, listen. Um, we've got some folks I want to get some calls from. I appreciate you taking time coming in. It's it's always a pleasure, Mike. And I want to tell you that the Progressive Voices Channel will make its debut on TuneIn on November fifth on Election Eve. This <sighs> is breaking news, and it will include the Mike Malloy Show. And I'm proud to say the David Bender Show. Well, so cool. I look forward to it, my brother. I, I hope maybe you can spend some time that night with us. I look forward to it as well. All right, David, thank you so much.